Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and uh, let me just tell you something. If I ever die and there is a hell, I think it's going to go something like this. I'm going to be shackled to a desk and forced to program all the time. That's not much different than my previous life, so that doesn't sound that hellish. I'm going to have to program using Xcode, though. <laughs> and let me tell you, having to write code every day, day in, day out, using Xcode is my literal definition of hell. If you don't know what Xcode is, it's basically Apple's platform. It's like uh, Visual Studio, but what you need to create iOS and Mac applications. And it's terrible. Uh, it's just a terrible work experience. People do not like working in Xcode. Even people that work full-time doing iOS app development do not like Xcode. I do not like Xcode. So thankfully, uh, JetBrains, the makers behind an IDE for literary every programming language ever made, uh, stepped in and they made a product called AppCode. So you can see the new project creation screen for AppCode in action right here. The entire idea here is this is basically an IDE for the Apple platforms, iOS, Android, but more specifically for their weird little languages that they go with. So in the world of Apple, um, the primary programming language was something called Objective-C. Uh, they inherited that when they bought Next OS. Um, it's a derivative of C, kind of like a C slash C++ hybrid area. Um, it, it, it's an interesting programming language. Never been my favorite, of course. But then they also later on moved to something called Swift. So let's say you wanted to create an application here. I wanted to create an iOS application. I could come in here. I could create a game. And what I can do is actually work with either of those actual programming languages. So I can make a Swift game or an Objective-C game. And there are a lot of proprietary. That's a word you use a lot when you're talking about Apple products. There are a lot of proprietary technologies out there for it, including Reality Kit for AR, we got Scene Kit, Sprite Kit, and so on. So let's say I wanted to make a 2D Sprite Kit only game using the Swift programming language. Well, as you can see, uh, AppCode is actually making that quite nice for you. Now, I mentioned earlier on, this, this here is the AppCode IDE experience. There is a lot to like about um, JetBrain products in general, namely, if you learn one of them, you can use all of them. They're available on Windows, Mac, and Linux, well, except for AppCode, because it only makes sense to run on Mac. Um, and, you know, same keyboard shortcuts, same theme, same plugin support, support for multiple different languages. Uh, you get great refactoring tools. You get great um, code editing experience. You can go into a Zen mode or a focus mode or a presentation mode. Uh, just generally, they are nice coding environments. Now, you're going to find there are parts of iOS development that aren't here. So, for example, if I want to open up a storyboard, this is still going to open it up in Xcode. So you're not 100% getting away from Xcode, but programming to write your code, you'll notice here also, here is my project from Xcode, here is my project in app code. So they actually, uh, so here's the test case that's created over here. You'll notice over here, it is here as well. Uh, but I just find as a code editing environment, a place for a programmer to live, Xcode is hell, whereas AppCode is pretty nice. Now, the downside of all of this is it doesn't matter anymore because it's all going away. So they actually just did a release. December 14th, uh, 2022, brand new version of, Xcode, of AppCode shipped and... AppCode is no longer available as a commercial product as of December the 14th. So you're getting legacy support here. You're actually getting some decent legacy support for a product that is being axed. But I find it actually kind of shocking that they are axing this program. So I mentioned earlier on, it is basically a nice code editing, code testing tool of multiple languages all in one spot. And if you have your alternative is to work in Xcode, it's just, it's so much better of a programming environment. But really, the only area that you're going to find that app code really shines at is Objective-C and Swift. Because quite frankly, they have developed programming language like from JetBrains themselves. So since then, they've developed the C Lion, which apparently actually spawned out of app code to a certain degree. Uh, but if you're doing C++ development, you can work with it there. If you're doing uh, C Sharp development, say Unity, or uh, you're doing C++ in uh, Unreal Engine, you can use Rider. Uh, you've got uh, WebStorm here for JavaScript. You've got PHP Storm for, well, PHP. IntelliJ IDEA, which is primarily Java, but has literal plugins for every programming language you can imagine. We've got plugins for Rust, for Scala. We've got refactoring tools. We have just basically an absolute ton of programs. We even have an IDE for the Go programming language. So the Go IDE is still going strong, but AppCode is getting the ax. So why exactly is AppCode getting the ax? Well, we've got a bit of a details here over on their blog. 
So uh, 2022.3 was just released. So there are some updates to it. Uh, support with Mac OS 13 and Xcode 14.2. There's one of the downsides to no more releases though, is every time these things get updated, so each new version of Mac OS or Xcode 14 or 15 or 16 or in the future, it's going to make existing uh, app code kind of less and less useful because it's not going to hook in as well. Uh, but the new release also brought refactoring capabilities for Swift, enables language injections, other things. Uh, but as of December 14th, 2022 will no longer sell new subscriptions or renew existing ones for app code, uh, but all active subscriptions will get fallback licensing uh, to uh, the 2020.3 release. So since the release 11 years ago, we've been applying expertise to make coding for iOS, macOS more enjoyable and really, again, Xcode is hell, so that is nice. Uh, accomplished many things, including the first uh, first class C++ support, uh, from which C Lion cross platform C++ IDE was born. So ultimately, we have a C++ IDE because of App Code, which is, I guess, kind of cool. And a lot of people do like C Lion. It's one of those things you should check out at some point if you are a C++ developer. Uh, an extremely fast release of initial support for the new Swift language. Finally, Kotlin multi-platform mobile technology, uh, which combines our passion for Kotlin with our knowledge of mobile technologies. You did not know Kotlin is actually a JVM-based language that they developed themselves. Uh, so while they had some growth in terms of adoption, we did not reach the market share we'd hoped for. Uh, so again, this is a company that is paying to keep a Go-based IDE going. Uh, but So Go is doing well enough, and App Code isn't. That, that's kind of shocking to me. By the way, no slight on Go. It's just there's not a huge developer community for Go stuff. Um, so until December 31st, 2023, so next year, uh, they will continue to provide uh, technical support and release updates specifically addressing those compatibility issues with Xcode. So you're going to continue to get that level of support through the next calendar year, uh, but you're going to get just that. So there's nothing else coming out of it. Uh, the Kotlin multi-platform uh, mobile is independent from the sunsetting of app code, so that's not going to be impacted. Uh, so normally when a fallback license is granted, the user receives a license for the version of the product that the user started their subscription with. Uh, but as a token of appreciation, we are doing things differently this time. Those who receive fallback licenses will get a license for the version that is available when their subscription ends. So um, you, you basically have a license to keep using uh, this product as of the end of your subscription forever and ever and ever. And then we get some more details of what's actually in this new update. Again, new refactoring tools for Swift, etc. cetera. Um, and yeah, kind of a shame, uh, to be honest. It's just, if you are working... Uh, using the Swift program language or Objective-C on uh, those particular platforms, one of your primary tools that isn't, um, you know, Xcode uh, is now going away. So you're, you're going to be stuck in Xcode for those particular languages. But to be honest, Swift is one of those languages. I, I don't really have anything personally against Swift, but it feels like a language that could have just been any other language and just wrote their own stuff. It's Apple made their own language to lock you into their own ecosystem. It's not that different from a language like Actually, the, the closest language to me for Swift was Hacks. Hacks and Swift feel very similar, uh, in my humble opinion, but I don't know if you have your own opinion. I, I like Swift. I would use Swift a thousand times over Objective-C, but I'm never going to use either language because they're platform locked to iOS's walled garden. Now, there's a lot of developers out there that are working on just like iOS products, for example, and this is going to impact them. And if you're working in those two particular languages, well, one of your programming options in the form of app code basically just went away. So you're going to get one more year of updates to keep it compatible with uh, the Apple ecosystem. And then pretty much each day thereafter, it's going to become more and more useless because the tooling that it ultimately still depends on underneath uh, is not going to be compatible or supported anymore. So realistically, there's about one year of life left for app code. So let me know what you think. Have you ever used app code? What do you think of it in general? What do you think of the Swift programming language, Objective-C, the Apple platform in general? And are you like me and you think that Xcode is the embodiment of hell on earth? Let me know these things. Comments down below. I shall talk to you.